Dan here, DD Podcast, with Murr. So we're going to try a new thing. Um, we, we've been talking about it for a long time. Um, so Murr happens to call me on a regular basis. And uh, every time he calls me, it's an hour of my life wasted. You remembered. So I thought if we could do that conversation and film it, then I could generate a few pennies. And then everybody else can understand what I have to do. Go through all the time? Did you comb your hair before? Uh, anyway, so it's pretty simple. Mia Murr is going to BS, but whatever. Uh, and then Danny's actually behind the camera. She's filming herself very, uh, very good looking. She's going to stand the whole time. And uh, ultimately, we're just going to kind of be, this is our first one. So we're going to BS around a little bit, talk about what's going on. Murr has been gone for the last six months, and I've seen him twice. So he actually just saw this car for the first time minutes ago. We said no talking. Uh, we, we didn't really, nope, we're not talking about anything. We said no pleasantries, Murr. No pleasantries, Murr. We're saving Mer. it for the camera. <laughs> it's all about the people. So, I mean, that's that's that. Now, if you have me new here, or whatever it is, so Murr, my dad, and... Uh, most people would say dad. Most people would say dad. I, I say Murr. And, uh, like, real dad. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Most, we haven't tested it. 50% DNA right there. Hard to believe. Not <laughs> but, the mailman, uh, no. But he's just Murr to me. <laughs> Murr to everybody. <laughs> why? Yes, indeed. I don't know I've never, I never knew why you always just called him Murr. Well, right from the time they were little babies, Ted and uh, Dan, my wife Linda said, uh, you know, go give it to Murr, give it to this, give it to that, rather than give it to Dad. So right from the time they were <laughs> little children, they just called me Murr. So it's Mom. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can blame her, but uh, she'll never watch this. We can absolutely blame no. Lynn for everything. Blame whoever we want. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that. We're just going to kind of, I don't know. Mur has a list of things he wants to talk about. I have about. a list of things I thought I would do because I was given specific marching orders of not to screw up. So I think, oh, being the dull, boring teacher mode, I thought I better pick a few notes because we don't want this too awful. That's what you should do is put in a like a movie of Mur's like message that he sent him all <laughs> scrolling by. Yeah. Poor Mur has to deal with us who fly by the seat of our pants at all times. So I could not be more opposite than Murr in a lot of ways. Obviously, Murr's into cars, British cars. Uh, yeah. well, that's on the list. And I'm on to, into real cars. And when it comes to getting anything done, I am jumping with both feet with this much planning. And, and I uh, would be the opposite. Yeah. I like to have things noted down so I have a rough idea what I'm doing before I do it. How long did it take for you to pick out your car, Murr? my car yeah like the mercedes how much research went into that well the mercedes was easy because i got a phone call and said there's a dead mercedes convertible in the back of a field behind a house do you want to go and get it so i said yeah and then i got him and we drug it out with a rope so that that's nothing that, there's way more of that story than there was so oh, we show yeah. up the thing was in the back the kid showing it was yeah it was i've uh, been witted yes well it was a my best friend's ex-girlfriend of 25 years ago's brother who doesn't live at the house anymore because he is very ill and a stepson who's unrelated to anything was in charge of showing it. And uh, yeah, not the sharpest tool in the shed would be a nice way of saying <laughs> so it. So we, yeah, we pull up to this thing. You're going in there, we're getting it looking at and then we got it running or whatever, right? No, no we just have to drag it because it, was, you yeah, it wouldn't already? run. But oh, yeah. uh, well, what? Oh, there was the, that Dodge van out front. That was in, that's part two of the story. <laughs> part one it. of the story is we have to tow it out with a rope. So Dan's in his four wheel drive. We have a rope hooked up to it, and because it's December, it's completely iced over from inside the car. I can't see anything, and the kid is saying things like this going to turn this way and the house is there and the, and this car didn't run but the body was really nice uh so we got it jammed pretty tight i ended up phoning dan on my cell phone on his cell phone i said what's going on and he told me what to do and we so i dragged them out while towing them out yeah mm -hmm. but uh <laughs> well we had to remember we had to get out there it was so jammed up against the house of the fence forever we had to bounce it yes so yeah. we're we're getting this he was a you know nice enough kid we're okay we're gonna bounce and pull and he's like what's that gonna do we're moving the car his, it was like his brain was on fire when he saw us <laughs> moving this car <laughs> we're like whoa <laughs> and he's like oh <laughs> It's great. <laughs> it's always good to amuse the troops, but uh, <laughs> yes. Was that the 
only car that was out there that you guys were looking at, or wasn't there another one too? No, it was just Mer's ragtop Mercedes. Yeah, the, oh, it was just that one. No, there was a there was a van that we had to move to do that. So we had to start it up, and I had to move, and it had no brakes whatsoever. Probably a guy that again. They don't know me from Adam, but... Uh, but it wouldn't start. We it had it hooked up to the cables, and it finally went. You just... Right to the rug. <laughs> like 40 below, zero oil pressure. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, I'm taking the cables off this. Was like, not my car. Not my problem. So there we go. The you real your, question yeah. is, did you still end up paying asking price on the Mercedes? Uh, well, I negotiated with the, this guy's sister who knew nothing about anything. So, But because it was a sort of friend, I couldn't rip him off too bad. But I think I got a good deal. You know what Murr pays asking price on? Nothing. <laughs> I, I pay asking price every time I buy a liter of milk at the store. You can't negotiate that. Unless you have your CAA card and it's somewhere that takes the CAA. Oh, another funny. So Murr, he's like, you want to go for lunch or whatever? Yeah, yeah, we'll go for lunch. So we go over there. Oh, where do you want to go? Montana. Murr loves Montana. So, okay, so we go there and we sit down. And the, the waitress gives us the menu and all that. Well, Murr pulls out his phone. No, no, here's our menu. It's the CAA menu. I like the burger. He says. So uh, we have, you get the ten percent discount for being, uh, you know, a CAA member. So <laughs> fixed I mean, income senior. That's right. <laughs> well, I want a fixed income here. You know, so, you can't afford uh, to just spend money willy nilly. So people think I'm wasteful of things and all that. So a lot of the reason I'm the way I am is a hundred percent because of you. Being the opposite. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm the I'm the distributor 180. We're mm -hmm. breaking generational trauma. <laughs> yes, sure. it's, it is it is quite interesting over the years how many things we are quite alike and so many things we are oh my god different. But <laughs> <clears throat> most things. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But however, worth uh, what you paid for, right? No, oh, yeah, Mers, it's handy. It's just a few minutes down the road, so we can come over and I mean the amount of hoods have been lifted off and hold this, turn that, but it, unfortunately it goes both ways. Like this time of year, it's pull the Mercedes out, get the roof off, yeah, and put the snowblower away. Tomorrow as it turns oh, out. Yeah. And pull out the friggin' riding lawnmower and all yeah. these things. I'm like, man. Uh, just, you need uh, a different sun who's not too bright that lives closer. Uh, huh. Well, I've got the not too bright, but the, you know, anyway. <laughs> so what's on your list? What do you want to what's talk on, about? What's on my list? Okay, well. Uh, Can you see without your glasses? Yeah, no, I can't, but oh, Can you what see the through heck? the eyebrows? Okay, we've done the first thing there. <laughs> that one was me. Okay, never get married, <laughs> never have children if you get. Uh -uh. <laughs> However, okay, so we'll, I, I said we should talk about the early years of Dan. Oh, God. So when he. <laughs> These are always my favorite, is yeah. early years. Nobody of wants Dan. to hear the early. Yes, well, they, I'm sure they do. Well, I you know. I think what? we'll have to get you to send a picture that I can put here of like. Little Dan, Medium Dan, yeah. Big Dan. I've got those. I don't want this being embarrassing about me. <laughs> I think we, we just ripped on Murph for like eight minutes. Yeah. I think it's your turn. All I know is when we put stuff on this channel, it's to only make myself look good in every <laughs> way. How many times have we seen your butt crack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, too many. I've seen it. Mm. Well, no. I just share it. Mm -hmm. No, I thought of a few things about the early years of Dan. The public might be interested. Comment. What you oh, think? No. <laughs> That's what you always do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he was a wee little gaffer, he was into cars, even like age four, and we had a little service station that had cars, and he would bring it in and jack it up and fix it and do all that stuff. And we still have the little Tykes garage in the basement somewhere. So we're going to mount it, I think, on the roof of the Camaro because yeah. it would look way cool. There's going to be a lot of stuff to throw out at the estate sale. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he did that for uh, many years and leave crap all over the place, which I stood on because he left them in the appropriate place. But... In my defense, they've seen your garage. They've seen my garage. They know where I got that from. We're oh. very similar in storage you know i'm pulling this podcast over right now and that's <laughs> okay uh let's see he built a, a go-kart in school there was a go-kart club and i helped out with the teacher so we built a go-kart that was in your junior high so it must be 10 12 something like that how fast was the go-kart as fast as you wanted to push it. It was yeah, just it was one of those oh. no no motor type soapbox thing. derby car yeah. oh how long did it take you guys to build it a few weeks, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah. What did you use to build it? Wood. So Wood it was and like... axles. So we were high tech because we had axles that have bearings on them and all that sort of so stuff. So what it was, so everyone, you could buy this kit and it came with all, you had to spy the wood, but it came with all the, the yeah. bullshit to put it all together. 
So then Murr goes, it was, and it's a race in the end or whatever. So of course Murr goes, well, I got this old wheelchair. So we had these giant wheelchair <laughs> wheels on it and stuff. And Low like, rolling resistance, <laughs> high pressure. VMX front wheels or something like that. And yeah, built a big wing that we could push on and stuff. Meanwhile, these kids are working on these little, like, I don't know, like yeah, four inch wheels. or whatever. Yeah, little lawnmower wheels, no bearings, just like junk. Yeah. And there we are with the... Uh, <laughs> Your supercharged derby car. Yeah, yeah. And it looked like a little car. Everybody else was just like, whatever. It was pretty neat. I oh, yeah. We had a radiator and a grill and a steering wheel. And yeah, it was kind of like, kinda, it looked like a Model E kind yeah. of vibe or yeah. whatever to it. Yeah. So, what did you do with it? At? Like, did you race it? Like, did you guys you just, go like, down a hill or something? Or? do that. The mantle was a lot flat, but. Yes, it's a lot flat. It was pushing then down a little bit of a hill or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know. We got that. Went. Somewhere you used to have the five inch trophy, but I don't know where that so is. So, you guys won? Well, I don't mm-hmm. remember. Yeah, I think it, I think. How could we not? Everybody got a trophy, I think. There was, you know, in the series of sportsmanship and all that stuff. Nah, no, but we clearly wiped our asses, yeah. So is this like a regular thing that people, like, I've never heard of people doing this in it's real life. It's after, an after-school thing. It's an after-school program that kids the got together. voluntary one, not the ones you have to go to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the ones you had to go to, not nearly as good as it turns out. Oh, I see. Well, we'll have to touch on that later. <laughs> no, I was a good kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was fine. I made it through high school first round. Didn't you pressure wash your name onto the side of the house? No, it wasn't pressure washing. It was uh, tire cleaning foam. Even better. Yes, on my cedar siding, which is still there. <laughs> 20 it's, years later. It's yeah. faded sli- 30 years later. Uh, but well, anyway, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh. You know, you only see when it rains. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on, on to that. The next magical trick of Dan when he was probably about, uh, oh, I want to say 13, 14. Um, at the time, we had Volvo station wagons. I worked for Volvo in my youth, so we had Volvos for years and years. Dan's mom always had Volvos. And this was a four-speed overdrive station wagon. And when they used to get driven to school, Dan learned to drive the standard from the right-hand seat. So his mom would drive and he would shift gears and all that every time on the way to school. So that was the first experience with that. And how, how did that work if you're not, so mom would do the clutch? Yeah. And you'd... Sh- it's like we were British. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, uh, and he did manage to transition from left hand to right hand now. But, it took me uh, a few years. How old better. were you doing that? On the what way to high school, yeah. yeah. That seems Before I could drive. Yeah. That doesn't seem safe. Oh, yeah. Well, was Linda was steering. It's just he got to shift and, you know, and you know, put in the clutch, this and that. And, well, I don't remember when I taught him how to drive a stick. I'm sure on, a, like, the dirt road, it must have been, like, 12 or something like that. But yeah, there's remember. nothing to hit. But uh, uh, then he did that, and then we he had the whole manual transmission down when it came time to get the real license. Uh, that's what he did. Now all these years later, we have a now we stick have, shift. What were you like trying no to bad. get your real license? Got first try. Oh yes, that's a, that's another another important note from the past that uh, Dan turned sixteen, which is the driving age in Manitoba, uh, on a Sunday. So he didn't get the Monday nine o'clock appointment, but he did get the nine fifteen appointment. I got, got the license the first time, and it was bye bye. And <laughs> ever since, <laughs> what ever car since. did you drive? The Volvo wagon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be the Volvo wagon that uh, was reportedly making a funny noise. And uh, I said, uh, well, what did you do? I didn't do nothing. So I went and looked at it. And coincidentally enough, both front motor mounts and the transmission mount were ripped out of it. And uh, I found out some months later, he was trying to pull his buddy's four-wheel drive out of somewhere with the, with the <laughs> Volvo wagon and yanked the, all the engine right off the mounts. These things happen. I believe that was Mike, the man that stores your car. Now. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, that's yeah like Mike that's... was involved in a lot of stupid shit there for a while. Yeah, you, you got were... a way better memory than I do. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> well, you didn't have to fix it, did you? Well, a lesson learned. <laughs> it, it makes it seem not so bad when I go, I don't know what that noise is. At least I wasn't trying to do something not what you're not supposed to do with the car. So I recall that car had a trailer hitch, which means it was meant to tow. It, yep, <laughs> it did have a trailer hitch, yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, a camper. <laughs> Whatever. And uh, the important note about that is Dan lies. <laughs> so we, 
He's, he's much more <laughs> free with the truth now, but in, in the first years, it did take a bit of, uh, <laughs> bit of thinning to figure out yeah. what the real story was. I really lie to you guys on the internet. Yeah, They're really else I'm honest, too. Yeah, well, know that, internet. <laughs> How do you know he's lying? His mouth is moving. Yes, indeed. Well, <laughs> but, uh, this is really rough on I, me here. You sound uh, like you were a greasy kid. Yeah. Well, so I've been, I'm, the sa- I'm the same guy I've been forever, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yeah, you're not far off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just not, as bright. Not uh, didn't do a lot of drinking that I know of. Yeah, still doesn't that I know of. So Too busy was, doing car stuff. That was good. Yeah, well, that is true. You, you know, waste money that way. The, the Jay Leno model. If you're just playing with cars, well, you can't get ask, into trouble. How do you get so much done? Well, don't drink, no drugs, don't watch TV, no kids. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of extra hours in the day to work on hot rods. Yeah. Well, that is that is very true, and to all you dads out there that have kids coming up, how they are is not necessarily how they're going to turn out, because when you were hmm, 15, 16, you were lazy, lazy as shit. <laughs> you wouldn't do nothing. When I, when I built my big garage, I thought this would be good. He would have a garage to use. He would be happy. He would help me do this. No. Not doing that. No, he was gone. He was missing. He was absent. Well, you know what happens so, around that age? Girls. Yeah, well, there was there was a few of those. We you don't need to talk about those that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were sudden. no girls before me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hold that thought. Love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so then, it was, so if he was lazy, how did you get him into like cars and doing stuff then? Because that yeah. seems a juxtaposition of what I know is that you were like building cars and like doing car he stuff from a young age. He became very self-motivated after that driver's license and oh. uh, whatnot. And um, well, the first car we got, um, and it, it was a good car. I helped them pick it out, but it was a 67 Impala SS convertible um, brought from the original guy type of thing. So, it, and it was a pretty decent car. Needed needed some body work, which we, we did. Uh, out of made, a furnace. Yeah, made quarter panels out of a out of a furnace. Uh, that was that was definition of on a budget. This is bodywork. I remember that. So we got this thing. And you'd just lower sections, not yeah. the whole quarter. Remember, had whatever an old furnace or something. I cut a square out of it, and we had some big roll of tape or something like that. We were rolling it on the ground or something, weren't you? I forget what it was. That was there. the bent. No, I got it bent at school. I taught high but school we were automotive. A, a, like a, a, curve. Yeah, a curve in it. Yeah, but I did I did, something there. The tape yeah, they had a big sheet metal brake at school, so I was able to put the contour line in it but it still had to be bent so we wrapped it around and rolled it in there and welded it on and we did preliminary body work that the first one actually I got painted at my school they were nice enough to to paint it for me because we all took care of one another back in the old high school so that was good I got painted there I remember that yeah yeah oh. it's painted there yeah it had a run in it I thought we did that no they did that yeah <laughs> oh. no I, I think I believe I oh. did that, <laughs> but uh, it was done in a real spray booth and all that sort of stuff. But we learned oh, about uh, wet that. sanding and polishing clear coat, and but we did the mechanical stuff. You learned how to do all the brakes and all that, and it was actually a really nice, really nice car. Yeah, that was a one. Looking back now, should have kept it. It was a really nice car, but okay. so what happened? Like what happened with it? Sold it for what? That was money. Huh? Money. That was one that of was, the first things yeah. when he figured out. Uh, you know, we paid. $2,500 for the car and, you know, basically a million hours of labor, but no money. And then he sold it for 5500 bucks or something like that. I think that we, I think it was less than two grand even paid for it, but yeah, yeah. it was, it needed very little yeah. and it was on the road. But that was many years ago now yes. when you could get the cars that were kind of, like that was a, it's a nice car now, but back then it was a, it was a boat yeah. convertible and, yeah. and the top was ruined yeah like it only looked good with the, the top down yeah and uh you know paint i mean it didn't maybe a little bit of fender work or something like that and it had a like i remember i couldn't afford anything because it had the 67 had the kind of like a nova the, the grill things on the side it was smashed in and they were like a hundred dollars like well it might as well have been a million dollars at the time when you're yeah. pumping gas or whatever i was doing yeah. and uh couldn't afford any of the trim but yeah need like no floor work or nothing like that just the lower quarter sections painted it and i mean it was a it was a running driving car right from yeah yeah it was in good shape 283 last forever but it was yeah. a really nice car. 283 power glide yeah two barrel and i also believe that was the beginning of a few interactions with the nice police department and being 
pulled over and assuming the position on the side of the car. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was whatever. That... Wait, you had to like pull over and put your hands on the roof? <laughs> that wall, that one. <laughs> See, that one, it was on your name the whole time. You owned it. That, so I, I never got a ticket on that one, but that was the guy, I'm going to call your father and this and that. I was like, oh, what, God, here we go. What ha- Tell the story. What happened? Oh, I don't know, speeding or something like that. Just general delinquency. For, for a long time, uh, in Manitoba, we have our driver's license have points on them if you do something <laughs> bad. And for a long time, he had more points than his age on his driver's license which is not the way you want to do it but now being much older and wiser he actually has what we call merits which are the opposite how many how many you got there Boy? lots now i, lots I now. think you're at the max aren't you I came around in a hurry really yeah. wow time flies i think i was 25 fun. before i got off probation or something oh it like was that. a long time yes it was yeah the, some topic of uh, the family christmas dinners all the time well, how many points you got in the license this year, Dan? <laughs> well, then you learn that you get you get discounts on insurance and stuff like that. It really is pretty nice. It pays mm-hmm. to be a good driver. Oh, it really does. Yeah, click it or ticket, but whatever. Yeah. I also you gotta you know, learn these lessons. Sometimes yeah. you gotta learn the hard way. Yeah. Well, when I was a young chillin', they didn't have that system, so that was good. Oh god! Sure. <laughs> if it was just I, a fine, I <laughs> oh, if it was just a fine, I can only imagine how many fines I'd have. It's the they take your license away and. Don't, don't give it back. How yeah. much money do you think you've uh, contributed to the Manitoba economic uh, structure? Oh, I like to support local. How much do you think I don't like to support know. local? <laughs> For <laughs> one year, I think I paid monthly. I had to yes, pay. Yes, yeah. I couldn't yeah. afford my license, he, so I had to pay monthly. You did get it to the point that they, they did have a show cause hearing. That was, that was pretty tight, where you had to really yeah. justify why they should let you keep you go driving. Go on Saturday courses, and they tell you how to do it, and you yeah. carry on with life. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. We've all done that. No. No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen. No, only be. Oh, I didn't do that only because it didn't exist back yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did the stupid thing when I was a 16-year-old guy. Well, what too. did you do? What was your chaos? Well, I don't know if it's my, not just, <laughs> I don't know if I want to tell. I can't just Dan. rip on Dan the whole day. Yeah. I'll tell Dan stuff, but I won't tell any of mine. I'm perfect. <laughs> well, back in the day, my buddy had a really fast motorcycle, and I had a four-wheel drive, so we used to change. You know, he had a mine for a while, and I had his for a while. And there's a, a little used street in the industrial part that isn't populated Saturday and Sunday, so I took his motorcycle there and thought well I'll just give it tar paper because there's nobody around except for the one cop mm. that there was so I got well, I caught one guy yeah I got caught at like 96 in a 30 mile an hour zone so that was not good but it was also the time when I sent my dad to court and he bailed me out of that saying oh he's just a nice guy and he didn't do that so yeah we I think we've all done that because now if you get caught at that it would be mm, crush the bike crowbar hotel and crush the bike yes so they don't there are a lot of rules now if you're 50 percent over they do not no i know any amount of that would have been not a good thing to get caught at now i think triple the limit would have been so children don't do that well and just dangerous yeah, well, there was really nobody around just except for that one guy. But So it wasn't even that big of a deal? No. See, we've all been no, there. No, you got to learn the hard way sometimes. So what did you get? So you sold the convertible. So then what did you get? What was the next one? 72 Le Mans. Now tell us about the 72 Le Mans. Why do we got to get into everything? We, like, we, there's lots of episodes coming here. <laughs> 72 Le Mans is actually a really nice car. Another car I wish I didn't get rid of. But uh, that was. Did you get rid of it? Is that what happened? Yeah, insurance bought it from me. But that was. I think we bought that off the original owner too, wasn't it? Some yeah. little old lady. Yeah. And that was just like it was a three fifty. So I mean Canadian. So it was a small block Chevy, Chevy. Mm-hmm. turbo three fifty with a ten bolt or whatever it was. Nothing too crazy. Two door hardtop, seventy two, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was. And do we do full quarters in that one? That was. Yeah, or, that we did real. Full quarters. That, that was quarters, and that was a lot more. I mean, that was a couple of years later now. Oh yeah. yeah, but that's when I learned a lot more because it had a vinyl roof and it had rotted. Yeah, the back. You put real quarters on, and and 
put them in welded properly and and all that yeah properly is left to well they yeah. peeled off like a sardine can when i hit that light that light standard i remember I that well, that's so, the, so uh, they weren't welded that good because i welded them but yeah nothing was done and they just i remember it was like bench seat column shift yeah it was a nice car i remember at the time you paid two and a half grand for it and i was astounded that somebody would pay that but now it's you know two and a half grand was cheap it would be like getting a was, car for i don't know eight or nine now that was really but nice. it didn't need because it was quarter panels i think we did the front brakes like yeah. it had disc brakes on already 72 so we yeah. just did yeah, it was a nice car it, it was, was a really nice, nice car, car. Yeah. yeah and that car was fast that was the yeah. problem mm -hmm. so you get in trouble and things are fast that uh, infamous night, I guess we're telling this story now here. So we sure are. So I get the phone call and uh, episode two, we're talking about Murr's pants. I'm just uh, throwing that out there. So. Uh, we're not telling the pants story. <laughs> oh, we're telling the pants story. <laughs> so I get the phone call and Dan says, uh, "So I've had a flat tire. Um, <laughs> can you bring a jack and a tire and rim?" So I said, okay, well that's fine. We had lots of Chevy tires around at the time, and uh, he did have a spare tire in it. Probably one of the last cars he does because he never has a spare tire in any of his cars. Of tow truck. That, that was the whole thing. <laughs> Not worry, worry. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. so I said, "Okay, yeah, sure, I'll come and uh, I'll get the floor jack and a tire, threw it in the car." So I'm driving along you know, to where his, I assume he was at his friend's house, the infamous Mike, not too far away. Mike about, was in the car, yeah. Yeah, little, yeah Mike was in the car, yeah. A little, and, uh, we're going to so, have to get Mike over here one day for this too. Yeah. So we're driving along and there's a police car and there was a fire truck goes by and that was kind of an odd thing. Fire trucks don't usually go by at that particular time. And I turn to the left and the fire truck turns left. Hmm, where's the fire truck going, I wonder? So I keep going down there and uh, well, just coming up to the street where he told me and hmm, the fire truck's going down that same street. That's real peculiar. So then I see the car and I'll see if we can find a picture of the car. I know it, it, does, bad, it, it does exist. Yeah, it was wrapped around a <laughs> pole. The quarter panel was <laughs> around like that. And he said, uh, you know, it needs a, you know, a tire. Well, the diff was ripped out of it. The tire was <laughs> like this. No, it, it was not driving anymore ever in its lifetime. So. It's funny now. <laughs> it's funny now, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't well, so as funny at the time. What, yeah, your what? mom didn't think it was really too much of a chuckle, but. Mm -hmm. What did you think was going to happen when Murr showed up with a tire? Yeah, it was the wrong phone call. You're right. I should have called someone else. But Mike was already there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the partner in crime was, in fact, the partner in the crime. So, yeah. So there is a telephone pole that you own somewhere yes. in this city. It's a light standard, yeah. yeah. A light standard, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah. you kindly paid for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For different the... colors, still different colors, still there. Yeah. See it every now and again, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can drive by and take a picture of it and say, this is your... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a picture we go look at it. It's sponsored by DDC. At insurance, you know, because you know the tow to insurance and the things there up on blocks and stuff. And I was standing. Well, it's in the hallway. Here we have it here. I'm standing inside the where the pole hit. <laughs> yeah. It hit the pole and the pole bent in half and smashed the roof at the same time. It was yeah, right on the. And this is a residential street. You know, this one does not exactly. I couldn't believe the damage happened at 30 mile an hour. It was unbelievable. I don't believe that either. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's worth a shot. I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> yeah, we bought that car back, though. You still, stole still all sorts of parts off of it. We got yeah. disc brakes and all yeah. that went on something else. Well, the engine was... You sold the engine to Mike. And, and I bought then, it back. Then you ended up buying it back to put in the 47? I, I think that's you did bought it you bought it back for I remember yeah something. I ended up money head in the end it was out the car which is too bad because that was a really nice car I wish I still well not still had it but I wish I would have kept it <laughs> well you wish you maybe hadn't have bent the frame into a pretzel but other than that these things happen these well, things life, happen life yeah. lessons and you get the next one the next one the next one you kind of keep carrying on mm -hmm. was there like a worst car that you guys worked on together a worse car. <laughs> Most people turn their cell phones off during live recordings. Talk to your mom. Um, She's texting me. Typically, she knows what you're doing here and everything. So what can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I don't think they're all pretty bad. They're all bad cars. <laughs> they start. I mean, they, they, I don't know. Those were nice cars, but nothing was bad. Bad. Well, that, it also had. I have. I have in my notes. It was the first of putting ugly hood scoops on cars. That was yeah. your fault. You bought the hood scoop. 
Yeah, but it didn't be appropriate for a Le Mans, but he put it on anyway, so. Getting up a Le and then on that truck. Uh -huh. After I racked up the Le Mans, I cut the hood scoop off and put it on something else. I love hood scoops. <laughs> I've loved hood scoops since day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as too many hood scoops. That's true. Well. What else you got there? Anything important? Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. I just. Uh, it's hard to go through. There's so many yeah, accolades. And I awards. had to scroll oh, the, my no, this one, finger a fair bit there. This, uh, this one was your mom's idea. It was oh. when he was. <laughs> he used to come home and crash out on the couch and all the money would fall out of his pockets to change. And uh, so <laughs> your mom would always clean up all the change and we put it in a little jar. And then uh, so we ordered Chinese food and then said, oh, it's good. I like Chinese food. So we ordered about 75 bucks worth of Chinese food. And as we were eating it, <laughs> your mom said, Thanks, Dan. You bought dinner tonight, so we, I'm still that way. Yeah. Well, that's how I get a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's how I get I, all my allowance. Yes, when you were when you were courting, I remember that well. Yes, you have. <laughs> look at all the money left over. <laughs> and to this day, I still. Anytime I do your laundry and stuff, if it's under fifty dollars, I take it without telling you. If it's over fifty dollars, I under tell you. Under fifty. Wow. I'm bad with money. I've always been bad with money, but <laughs> but I usually do it to like buy us dinner. Easy come, easy go. We can uh, always work overtime on Saturdays. Yeah, that's good. Make a little more. Make a little more. We have what we want, <laughs> and it's important to have these things, right? Bonding time. <laughs> Let's talk crap about Danielle for a bit, or something like that. Or can we talk cars? Maybe no. like I think that's people are tuning in. Yeah. Not well, just rip down well, a new one. Well, that's always good. What else have we got here? The uh, I mean, Monte Carlo. About cars, just about my shortcomings. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the same thing. As few and far between. Well, I do have a note that says, you know, <laughs> we've always disagreed on cars. Everything. I mean, I, I, just about all the time. Yes, yeah, the things that I like, he hates and whatnot. So, uh, but he does, to his credit, follow a lot of the things that I tried to teach him. Uh, Make sure it's got good brakes, make sure it's got suspension bushings, uh, all those sort of things, which is quite funny for anybody that's done it knows. Uh, the half hour car shows where they take the thing all apart and drive it in half an hour and knowing that the front end is falling off and it's not uh, aligned in any way, shape or form. But uh, that's one thing that, you know, he does do correctly. It's cheap like, and easy. A little yeah. mechanicing and next thing you know, you got to car drives nice yeah well, and, I, and I drive my stuff a lot those i mean if you're making a car to drive for half hour or whatever it is who cares what it drives like but yeah. i drive to work and toss keys to danny and stuff so yeah you know it's gotta be it's gotta be right well and so when it comes to cars mers into british stuff and volvos and whoa european cars european junk and so when we started the youtube channel i was filming and i bought that 55 chevy and I wanted to do a two-door conversion. Murph thought that was just stupid, this and that. So I bought a roached out car, bought the four-door, swap it all up. It happened, it worked, it was fine, the YouTube channel was going. And then the second Tri-5 I bought was Danny's 57, which was actually a really nice car too. It had been taken nice apart. Yeah. It was an original 57 Bel Air four-door um, sedan. The motor was missing, but it had a motor and trans with it. And the guy, classic, took it all apart but he had put everything in the little baggies and stuff and like really nice guy and he still watches out to the channel and sees the car and all that. So we bring it home and I put it all together. That car was like, didn't need floor repair or nothing, the disc brakes on it. I think it even it had drum brakes originally. It was just whatever. Got on the road, it's all done, got it inspected. Danny Polish it up, it looked nice. Yeah, it looked really nice. And we yeah. did that, that was at the end of the end of the year type thing. You know, it was for my 30th birthday, it was done. In yeah, so we did all that, which is August. October. It was done in August. Nail. <laughs> Maybe it's time for that break. <laughs> Whose birthday is in August that I'm sleeping? Uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> so is was, that the time we get the car all done? It was a nice car. I'm not telling you about the over fifty dollars anymore. <laughs> worth it. That was worth it. So I bring the car in and I'm looking at the thing, and there was a guy that had a mint set of two door sedan doors. For like, and they're still the best doors I've ever bought for 250 bucks. Buy them, bring them home, and I'm like, I'm cutting this car up. I'm turning into a do door. And Murr goes, that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Like, oh, just like, what, you're ruining this car, this and that? Cut that thing up, and that video was the one that started the channel, the ball rolling. Yeah. And ever right. since then, Murr's the litmus test. What do you think about this? I wouldn't do it. 
oh, I couldn't do it fast enough after yeah. that because that's how you know people are going to want to watch it. And yeah, unfortunately, he's absolutely right. <laughs> Pisses me off, <laughs> you know. But uh, no, this uh, whole thing is uh, the empire built on Dan, and uh, I unfortunately have no idea about that. It's a shame, you know. I, I appreciate get... your advice because I do the opposite. Yeah, well, that's. Well, but it was Mer's advice that kind of got the ball rolling on. YouTube in the first place because you wanted a way to keep track of all the cars. Well, his idea was Google Photos. Which led to doing Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Like, so we owe it all to Mer. Yeah. That was the problem I had was I was going through cars, just like I me, mean, just like Mer does, or all, everyone does. We all, and at the time, I mean, you know, I had low money. So you'd build a car, you drive it for a bit, and then I had to sell that car to buy the next. I never really had two cars at once for maybe a small amount of time. I might have had two cars. And uh, so then the car would be sold and it was gone. You work on the next one. You're excited about that one, but you've no pictures or anything about what you did the other one. Yeah, because I the cars that I had, I've long since lost track of them because you have to take pictures and film and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I'm sure I've only got pictures of... 25% of the cars I ever had and from that he's you know he determined that probably he's already drunk the Kool-Aid it's gonna be just like this and and this is good so uh, no that's one of those things I have to admit uh, you know like the uh, the student has become the master when it comes to the YouTube Fill thing because all? you have it yeah and now well, the amount of times I mean when you get a lot of cars you look what did I do with this I'll just watch my own video <laughs> yeah. oh yeah that's what the problem is there but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It worked out pretty good. It's too bad you couldn't watch the video a little faster, sort of before oh, release. Oh, we're not talking about that, are you we? You put no. one release bearing in backwards. <laughs> you never hear about it again. You know what? People appreciate my brutal honesty. They do. We all make mistakes. Yeah. I, Some people were real a-holes about it, mm -hmm. but a lot of people said hey, it's not a mistake if you fix it. Yeah, that's true. I do I, a lot of fixing. It was. I can appreciate all the nice YouTube people looking at that because we were still in BC when I watched the video and I went, he put that release bearing in backwards. Sure hope he changed it before he put it together. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> you then, didn't know me. That's <laughs> not what happened at all. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, the front clip off, we had swapped out an hour. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. It was hard to watch all the videos, like, because I know that after that video came out, we released the video of you changing it, but it was hard to watch, like, the six videos after that was all knowing the work that we had done yes. without knowing. I didn't watch those videos. Here's, here's this nice looking car with a ticking time bomb in it, just ready to, to let go. And then you get to the video where you're like, well, you saw the video when we changed it, so now let's get back to where we just were. <laughs> Uh, you Whatever. got broad shoulders. That's good. What are you gonna do? What are you shit, gonna do? Shit happens. If you're if you're not making mistakes, I don't think you're learning nothing. Yeah, yeah, yep. I mean, I've learned more from my own failures and burning yourself. And oh, that was I don't want to do that again. And then yep, <laughs> I learned the hard way every that's true. single time. What's that? If you wanna, if you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. There you go. Yeah, if you're gonna be dumb, you better be tough. That's what that is. <laughs> so I made it happen. And now look what we have. We haven't tested the bearing yet. No. But, but I think it's in the right way. I, and it feels yeah, like the clutch is feels there. like it works, yeah. And yeah. it should be running and driving maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Well, it does look darn nice. A ton and a half of work, I have to say. This car, I tell you, when I, when I brought this one home, because there was a two. What? Just for maybe the people listening, what car is it? Oh yeah, so we're talking about a 67 Camaro. I keep forgetting this is going to be just audio as well. This is, it's the first one. We're getting used to it. So sorry so, if it sucks. Well, yeah. okay, we'll give a little... Uh, so it was like three years ago I bought these cars now, or two years ago for sure. I bought a 67 and a 68 Camaro with a pile of parts. Um, no drive lines or anything like that from you know, Saskatchewan. And uh, brought both of them home. And the 68, the guy had, uh, had worked on a little bit, had a new front end in it. Uh, like all the bushings and stuff, it was still a drum brake car. And it had quarter panels tacked on, some floorboards in it. And it was like, you yeah, know, whatever. But it was already stripped apart and I didn't know anything about it. And the 67 Camaro, which is sitting behind us if you're watching, it was a complete car. The interior was missing out of it. And I think it had a motor and trans in it, but it was junk. And I was like, well, I'll take this one apart and I'll learn how it goes. And my God, I thought it would be a quick, you know, well, I'll put some quarters on it and a little bit of rust repair and it ended up. Rear frame rails, trunk floor, full quarters, <laughs> inner and outer wheel tubs, tail pan, 
doors, fenders, floor pans. That's what we call the snowball effect. Yes. And it was pretty snowballing this one. Whoa. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it's a nice car now. <laughs> well, it is because this vent in those original and everything else has been yeah, changed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, there's the roof and the cowl and the, and the firewall. The only original sheet metal on the car still, but... Yeah. Well, that's the model you did with the first Nomad. Oh, you know, yeah, that was a, there. That was a very rough vehicle when you got it. <laughs> At least this one was just work. It was cheaper to buy parts. The Nomad, Yes. that was a life lesson. When you're buying unique cars, you know, like that Nomad came home and it was rod and i was like oh it's just sheet metal yeah. but it's the trim and the you know the yeah. only on twenty thousand cars had this thing and they're and they're not repopping yeah 70 years old and i'm like oh yikes but huh. well that is something that everybody's got to learn like the first monte carlo you bought was missing the yeah. side moldings and they thought oh they took these moldings out and they were kind of ratty we just ah, threw them all away we'll get new ones <laughs> then we figured out those things are like Four hundred dollars when the whole car only costs fifteen hundred. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's lesson learned. Everybody will will do that. Well, uh, that is a good point. Like when you're like shopping around at a car and stuff, bring your phone and maybe pull out the old Google and like oh, stuff this, that's missing. Google what's missing. It's different now. That was before the yeah. Google days. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was you know that was you know you'd look in the paper and it would be seventy Monte Carlo three fifty AT PSPB two-door HT so like is that how you would find cars I'm very young so I don't know. yeah you go you like Thursdays you go get the buy and sell and the auto trader was for the fancy pants guys but mm -hmm. the, the buy and sell was where the junk was and I mean you can only have it was like Twitter like 140 letters or yeah, 200 letters small, or something yeah. like that. so mm -hmm. people and it would just be it'd be like the classifieds there was I don't know how many there would be in there and it would just be you know whatever it was abbreviations for everything no picture and a phone number and you just call the guy yeah and that, I see, I, I was getting into that right at the tail. That was kind of going away. When I, I mean, it was maybe yeah. five or ten years. It was then before it went to, like, Facebook and Craigslist and all these things. But that now, so I was, you know, calling guys at 16 years old just asking questions about their stupid <laughs> Hello, car. Hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, fellow hot rodder. <laughs> I, too, like horsepowers. <laughs> and so I remember, you know, we go look at cars or whatever it was, parts and junk like that. So I've always just been pick up the phone and call the guy. And now the, it's changed. Everybody wants the message and all that stuff. And as it turns out, most of the stuff I'm buying. So when I was 16, I was buying off the 40-year-old guys. Well, that age gap has stayed the same. So those guys are still wanting the phone call. Yeah. So everyone right. that sends messages or emails and all this, people don't want that. They want a guy that's going to call and not sound like a tool bag on the phone. And that's how I get all my stuff, is by phone calls. So letting the secrets out there, but... Well, millennials don't like phone calls, so we won't ever do that. And that's... But you know what millennials also bitch about? They never they can't find anything. Where do you get these cars? Where do you get this? Where do yeah. you get... I make a phone call. And then after you talk to the guy, you show up with a truck and cash. You're not like, well, how about we make a deal and I'll get back to you next Thursday? No, no. People don't want that crap. They want it gone right now. That's who I am. Yeah. I hate that. I take less money cash right now. That was another thing we used to do in the early years when I was buying cars and whatnot. Dad would come with me and that's what you do. You go looking around and have your mitt full of cash right there and take it that day because if you waited, the next guy will come along and he'll buy it and steal it right from under you. So that's the other way around. That, I'll take you. Yeah, that's right. We go on lots of field trips looking at dead shit. Yeah, we haven't looked at a car in a while there. I sent you a link to that truck there, but it sold. No. Oh. What um We gotta go look at the Bricklin. <laughs> I've looked at it enough. No no, Actually, not the, that one. The oh, parts oh, Bricklin. Parts Bricklin, right? Yes, I keep forgetting I keep forgetting of all the Bricklins we have here. Mm -hmm. Well Bricklin because Bricklin it's in my house and it's out of how to I love out of that the, out of I love that the Bricklin's not here anymore. Well, is there a car you had to like really talk down off the ledge of with buying? Like were there was there like a really bad option he wanted and you're like, don't do it? I don't think so. I think you've bought pretty much the only car that was a bad deal was that firebird i bought that was the only one i ever lost that's on. right and i convinced you ineffectively not to buy that and you bought it yeah i remember that well it was a 67 or something yeah. like a firebird and it was rotten oh it was so rotten but it was a complete car six cylinder yeah uh automatic red yeah. looked nice but the freight well just like this the rear frame wheels were rotted and the leaf springs were in the trunk yeah. And it was, but it was cheap. 
I don't think it was that much, a thousand bucks, twelve hundred dollars, or whatever. Well, that was a lot of money for the the car at the time, like because now that you car... were still stuck. No, even You're, then. No. I mean, right now that would be thirteen hundred dollars would be all the money almost. But oh uh... God, no, that's a five six thousand dollar <laughs> yeah. car right now. But at the time, it was no, it was too rotten, and I tried to convince him it was too rotten, but. No, that, I think that's really the only one. The rest of them have been. You know, we parted out and made a few bucks back. And so, like, what happened? Like, you, what happened with it? Like, did you try to start it and you just couldn't get into it, or like? Well, I think it was over my head project-wise, and I think I bought it, but I think I moved out right after. Yeah. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. yeah. So I had, I bought it, and because it, it was going to be like at that time, I had a Chevy half-ton truck, like a '72 truck. And I had the Monte Carlo, I think. And then I bought that as like the next project or something. Yeah. Must have been. I, that Maybe not. But I think that's what happened. But then I bought it. It came home. Well, we put it in storage or whatever for a bit. Came home, looked, gave it once over, put it in storage. I had no time or money for it. And uh, and then the house we live in now came up. And that was, you know, so I had to sell everything yeah. and move. Yeah. And then when I moved, you I mean. like 19. Yeah. All I had was, I mean like a craftsman toolbox and that was it. Like I had no welders, I had no nothing. The garage I was in was not heated. So then it became, you know. <laughs> it's still not heated. Yeah, it is the exact same garage. <laughs> no, but I instantly it heated it. Yeah, yeah. The first year though, it was just sticks. Well, maybe the first two even. I forget what it was there. Yeah. Well, I did that fairly early, but that's, I did pretty uh, quick. I heated it all that yeah, the whole, power. The whole heated garage thing. Uh, can we shout out to Dave Berry? Our, our buddy, <laughs> my former neighbor, best friend, Dave told me that he heated his garage. And I thought, wow, a heated garage, like in Manitoba is pretty much of a luxury. And he uh, had a little garage, a little car and a half garage, and he heated it with a oil furnace from a mobile home. And uh, to work in the winter without freezing is huge. I mean, 50% of your viewers are far south, they don't even know what we're talking yeah. about. But there's a few people in North Dakota that understand the concept. like. Uh, I did a transmission on a Camaro in the winter time with two uh, in-car heaters and a tarp under it, freezing your ass off because it's cold, <laughs> dripping water, whether you were going to freeze to death or get electrocuted, it wasn't, yes. it was 50-50. So to have a heated garage was unbelievable and, and really it doesn't cost very much at all. And no. that that started me, and then from when Dan bought the house, that's one of the first things we did is insulate. And it, it's an old garage, but a little bit of vapor barriers well, and insulation. Was, and I think I wired that thing, insulated it, and put a heater in for like fifteen hundred bucks, yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And then I think the way it works, it was like it worked with fifty dollars a month to heat it. Yeah. Like it's such a small number in the grand scheme of things. Like some of the best money I ever spent was that, and then. Well, look what it turned into yeah. now. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's uh, you can't go wrong when you're when you're in some place that you can't really work on cars half the year unless you got heat. That that's well, a game and I changer. Think that was a big part of it too. Is that for me? You know, like if, it's funny when you have a hobby, you can only do half the. I guess sports guys are like that, but can't work on a car every single day. You lose interest in it. Then it becomes you pile stuff up on it. You forget where you were, and you have to you know motivate yourself again versus. I mean, the heat's on the garage all the time or whatever. You walk out and turn two bolts and you accomplish nothing, but you go back inside and you did something that day. Yeah. And I think, yeah, when you don't get that done, cars just sit. But yeah, that's, that's a lot of fire burn. And then it got parted out and scrapped. Yeah. Well, a friend it of mine says car. where we live in Manitoba, there's two seasons. There's driving season and there's fixing season. And they're just about in the middle. And that's, that's what it is. You spend six months... When you can't drive your car, doing all the work. So when spring comes, then you have a car to drive. Well, there's lots of there's lots of nice cars in Manitoba. People a lot of time. I was actually I was at Ridge's today. No. Walker out Walker out of parts oh. for your local guys. Floor pan Ridge, mm. and yeah, there's always people buying, selling crap. And now it's time where stuff's kind of coming up. Well, no, now it's the time people are panicking. Where's my parts? You know, can I get it <laughs> extra quick? He's like, well, where were you in February, buddy? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's middle of April and it's, you know, 20 degrees. Of course you want to drive it. What else you got? How long are we in here? Uh, you got like 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes? I need 10 more minutes of podcast. Oh, God. Well, I feel like this is, I'm getting off early here. I don't even have to. Usually the phone calls are an hour and a half. How's this? How's that? What's yeah. going on here? Nobody cares. Yeah. Well, well was, I it, had... was it hard to like... 
watch from afar and not give your like input in like instantaneously while you were away <laughs> no that's that's good I, I mean the miracles of youtube is nice i you know i although i know because now i know how the sausage is made here you know when i by the time i see it it's already probably driving somewhere type of thing but it is it is nice it's good to see but what's you're going like on. the worst commenter because they're just leaving a comment like most people you'll call me oh i watched your video and saw you did this wrong or that <laughs> Thanks, Mur. Like, just go, just go. Heart number one comment. The guy giving me a hard time. You don't actually have to call. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> well, we're trying to get Mur to his own channel, but he won't do it. People are very interested in your Volvo that's in the garage. Uh, I can't believe anybody is interested in anything wait, I do. Wait, what is the story on that Volvo? The Volvo in the garage is a '67 Volvo 123 GT, which is a one-year unique car. Uh, which Dan goes bad. <laughs> oh yeah, it's real unique. <laughs> yes, yeah, just because it's unique doesn't mean it's valuable. There but, you go. But it is. It's uh, it, it has some history. When when Dan's mom and I were courting, she had that particular <laughs> car like that, and I fixed it all up for her, and uh, she drove it as part of her work. So you to drive an old car when it was already pretty rusted, it uh, you know it was pretty hard on it driving in the winter and stuff like that. So it rotted out. And I said, if I ever got another one, I would fix it up for her. And we were married by that time. And I found another unique car like that. So I've done it once already, and now it's midway through the second restoration. Well, wasn't Mum's first car, it wasn't a 122, or was it? That was pre-me, but yeah. Oh, the, when we but were, she had a 122. She had a 122, which is an ordinary Volvo sedan. And the 123 is one that's got overdrive and limited slip and a bigger carburetor and an alternator instead of a generator which Ooh. is like oh these high-tech things back then but uh, that's what it is it's just one of those cars that when they gave up on the Volvo 1800 which is a little sports car like the Saint drove TV series that's from the 60s what you really need. Uh, yeah, and, there's one uh, for sale right now for uh, thirty grand. I know, green you can keep it, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's they had the drive lines left over and put it in a sedan body, and that's that's what it is. So it was the early high performance sedan before it was a thing. So it was a neat car. I, I mean, it's whatever. It looks how it looks and stuff. Yeah. But I just inside's neat. I mean, it's a stick shift. It's got the the tack on the dash, like an yeah. add on looking thing. Yeah, but it was factory. And the yeah. speedometer is neat. How it kind of yeah. is like a. You know, like a bar that goes across and stuff, and it sounds kind of cool. And, yeah, you know, it's yeah, they're they're not very common. So, eventually, I'll get that thing done. I, I got it. Brakes are done, suspensions done. Now I'm doing body work and stuff. Are like you that. hung up on body work? Is that the problem? Maybe. Yeah. It's well, terrible. Unfortunately, I mean, first world problem. When you spend half the year not at home, it is difficult to get stuff done. I'm slow at the best of times, but. Uh, when you come back, what did from, you get done last summer on that thing? Uh, so I did all the, I got all the suspension done. Oh, did you? Yeah. All the, all wow. The, so you got over Well, there. so you got the whole front end built in six months. Yeah. Pretty good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a weekend to me. But. Well, it does. From when, when we get back from British Columbia, it takes pretty much a month to get the house back in order and all the crap that's got to well, be done. Well, I stopped by there the other day on my lunch break. At yeah. noon or twelve thirty, and Mur had to put pants on. And my mom, she says, "Well, we're on BC time still." Well, that's right. I'm like, "Well, it's ten thirty. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know about you, but people go to work at seven. Well, they're retired. <laughs> you know, it's hard I've... to get stuff done in that six-hour workday you have. <laughs> I spent thirty years getting up at six thirty, oh, going to work. God. I enjoy having my coffee, sleeping in till eight thirty. Well. There yeah. is no one better that took to retirement than you two. Oh, You're God. always, whenever, like, at work right now, like, lots of people have been retiring, and I'm like, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I, I'm like, so I always talk about you and mom, and I go, listen, <laughs> Dan's parents. You should hold a course. Have been the greatest retirees I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Like, well, scheduled brunches, <laughs> garage sailing, putt skiing around. Yep. Well, you could be like, you know, what, what's the deal on Tuesday for, you know, for meals? And well, you got to go to this place for the that. And then like, holy moly, yeah, you guys got the schedule. There's no worry about, oh, I should go back to work or people get oh, like, no. you. <laughs> oh, no, no, there are, there are a lot of people when they retire, they, they have 
trouble transitioning <laughs> into doing it because they have, oh, whatever, what do we do with their time or this and that. So, no, I was able to ease into retirement. First, drinking <laughs> coffee in his underwear. Absolutely, <laughs> and I highly recommend that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I can always tell I'll be at work or something like that. You know, it's eleven o'clock, which is you know kind of the you know the up and on on the iPad looking at, and that's when the stuff comes through. Oh, did you see this for sale? Did you see that for sale? Like, oh, Mur must be awake. Yeah, yeah. He, he's on his second cup of coffee. Yeah. Now he's, oh. he's gone through the British stuff, and now yeah. he's down into the GMs. Yeah. He's like, oh, look, this might be a good carburetor for I've you to buy. I've sent you lots of links of things that you've actually bought. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you've spent lots of my money. Oh, it's way fun. Spending your kids' money is great. <laughs> I, I, I highly recommend that. You should have one of those because you know, I might want to use it. <laughs> I hear all this, and here it is. I bought you a Canadian supercar and fixed the doors and yeah. delivered it to yeah. your home. I didn't put a bow on it, but I put a Rubbermaid tin over the motor. Almost the same thing. It's, yeah. yeah, strapped down. Yeah. You know, you just but you were can't. supposed to have taken it apart and looked at all the brakes, so it would all be here waiting, and you didn't do that. I sent you pictures of the brakes. And yeah, you but, were going to tell me what it needed, and I was going to order it. No, you have to take the drums off because you have to measure them. Oh, I didn't do that. You You're didn't right. do that. No. But it's at your house now. Well, oh, Danny's GoPro. Uh oh, what's that? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> so you guys can keep going. That's a, that's a warning to turn on, <laughs> turn, on turn on the camera. That's now we just don't get my incredible facial expressions anymore. Nah. Oh, shucks. <laughs> mm. um, how long did you teach power mechanics for? 30 years. So in that 30 years, what, like, I guess collectively would be your number, like maybe your top three things that people should like, oh, like your three top pieces of wisdom from that time that you would provide to people as a teacher. Oh, God. <laughs> covers a lot of ground there, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just do what your parents say always. That's an important bit of wisdom. <laughs> I find the exact opposite. Yes, indeed. Fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think follow your whatever the hell you want to do. Figure out how to make money at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to find out what you like to do and do it. Because I mean, so many people, you know, have done that and not succeeded because they just they did something financially. They think it was money. And I learned that, oh, one of my first jobs when I was like 18, I got a job at a place that rebuilt water pumps and carburetors and it was mindless in a factory, the bell goes off, you do this, then it, it's lunch bell, oh God. And I couldn't do it and I made lots of money at the time, but I only lasted like three weeks before my brain turned to goo. So. Whatever you're oh, yeah. going to do for a job, you got to enjoy it. And I mean, 30 years, there's lots of times, lots of frustration, but it was a good job. You got to meet lots of people and hopefully you get knowledge onto some of the little fellas that managed to do something with it. It's, it's an enjoyable thing, teaching people how to do things like what Dan does, like a lot of the stuff he does is oh, sort of like what I did. This is not a how-to channel, it's a how to get it done channel. <laughs> well, like, you know what? If you see it done wrong, you're still learning. <laughs> there you, know you mean? go. There's, you know, yeah, I'm sure you can, people one way or the other. You can do it the right way or the wrong way, but you still learn. Yeah. So many people they chase the almighty dollar, and that ends up just whatever. Like I, you know, I tell Danny that all the time now. That I mean, you know, YouTube's paying for the cars and stuff like that, so we can do all this stuff, and you know, which is fantastic. But uh, I don't think I'd buy a nice new car or whatever it is you know like it's or like a or a done car yeah like the odds of you know yeah. there's a guy with the camaro for 30 grand i'd be like man wow there's any quarter panels it's nice that it's nice to have one car that's new and under warranty or whatever and that's just speaking from you know being an old fart you know that i don't want to try and fix something on the side of the road to british columbia because you couldn't do it anyway type of thing it's so it is having you know having that is you nice you know what and, though if you start a youtube channel They'll make money. They'll make money, yeah. So that's why you drive the old crap well, on purpose. That's true. That's true. But it's good to have one. It's good yeah, to have Eddie one. Eddie Caprice, yeah. low mile, she is good to go. Actually, Look, that thing needs it looks, radio. It also looks like uh, the left front turn signal side marker or something is yeah, it's missing. not present. It's what? not missing. It's in the back seat. So that oh. was... Oh, okay. <laughs> Danny had an old lady moment. 
First of all, I didn't tell you about the old lady moment. I didn't even tell you what happened. Did you knock into that thing? I just said it fell off. Oh, is that what happened? I might have knocked in. <laughs> so I was in a parkade. <laughs> and I hit like a... How are you not in the camera telling this story now? <laughs> Your camera conveniently dies when you break something. Because you even came home and gave me attitude about my glue job. <laughs> well, because I thought it should have held up. But I, hit, that... I hit a post. <laughs> I saw that <laughs> from the street. I came up and I went, looked at the car and I went, what the hell's wrong with Danny's car? <laughs> so we ha like I hit a post and that's how the light came out, but like it came out because your glue job is bad. So I still have the light. <laughs> so that, that thing had been, someone had backed into that car at some point and, and tore out the headlight. And all. So I bought new stuff, but there's no structure behind right. it. Yeah. So I made the headlight so it's all aimed and it's good. But the side marker light, there's nothing there. And mm -hmm. it's like, not worth buying the piece. I'll just glue that thing right. in there and then, yeah. you know, you can still get to the back to change the light. It just doesn't, whatever. And I came home one day and it's it's hanging by the wire. I'm like, what happened? She's like, oh, your glue job. And I'm like, oh, I, I thought it pretty good. I thought, like, I really gave her the gusto. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> Take this, my $50 back. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of a phone call. Bring a jack and a tire. This was you my don't tire get moment. the whole story. Oh, that was my tire moment. <laughs> You deny till you die. That's that's how it is. Well, there we go. I feel like that is a great place to leave it for today. Well, there you go. So that's so we're we want to get together, you know, do this maybe once a week or whatever it is. We if you guys want to watch it. Hopefully there is. If you have ideas or just trust me, Mer will read the comments and he will make spreadsheets and bar <laughs> graphs and overhead projectors. What were those called? Uh, those yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, he'll yeah. he'll do that. He'll slideshow PowerPoint. So yes. Yeah, uh. questions, whatever. If you want to answer, if you want little segments, whatever. We're just kind of winging it, much like <clears throat> I do my entire life. Yeah. Well, Dan thought this would be a good idea, so I said, "Well, I don't you know." You didn't, so that's why it's going to be. That's successful. right. I said, "What the hell will that be?" But anyway, I mean, I said I would help doing whatever I can, as one does with one's child. But uh, so you can take I, the hood off, uh, look for taillights when they're you know we're doing wiring, and now you can come BS for an hour. Oh, uh, see all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, do uh, <laughs> uh, comment if you want to do this again because I find it hard to believe. But oh mm. no, yeah, we're we're gonna do it. We're gonna be big time. We're gonna get sponsored by Blue Chew and all those all things. those things. <laughs> Princess Auto. Hey, that's uh, Princess Auto. A little more. We're working on it. Yeah, that sounds like a. We'll that sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for listening and maybe a little bit of watching. And we'll see you on the next one. And if you want to get one of those fine work shirts that Dan is wearing, you oh, can get it listening. from ddspeechup.ca. Only for US. I know I'm the worst. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.